Now let's learn about finite element creation in ANSYS APDL. So finite element models are consisting of nodes and elements. Again, because a solid model will be discretized into a finite number of elements, that's why the method is called finite element model. The most common way to create finite element models is through meshing, which discretizes the solid model into a number of nodes and elements. It is recommended to give element size or line division to ensure a good quality of meshing as opposed to uh, leaving it up to default element size. But element sizes don't necessarily have to be consistent across the solid model or the finite element model. In regions where it's critical, it can have a finer mesh, where, whereas in the regions where stresses or deformations aren't very critical, it can have a coarser mesh. It's really a good practice to consider meshing while creating your solid model to ensure that the element shapes will be in good shape and uh, avoid irregular element shapes or element shape violation. And also some of the models cannot be meshed with hexagonal element shapes due to the complexity. That's why we would use element, type, element types with tetrahedral element shapes. Here, by defining an element size for my model, the volume that I that I sweeped along two lines, I can create this mesh. So basically I've used element size command or E size to give a element size value here. And then I have used mesh command to create this finite element model from that volume. Here by not considering meshing during creating this solid model for a circular support like this, I wasn't able to create the hexagonal element shape. And this is the best I could do after meshing. As you can see, in the filleted areas, the element shapes aren't looking that great. Also, because of the element shape, which is tetrahedral here, I ended up with lots of elements, which means I will have lots of nodes and degrees of freedom to solve for. So this element or this finite element model will take a longer time to solve because of its element shapes. However, by being more considerate during element or solid model creation by defining this line here and that line here and being more patient with creating the solid model, I was end up I was able to end up with a better mesh shape like this, hexagonal with less nodes, less elements. Also the fillet joints are looking a lot better than before. And this would be a better element shape or finite element to solve this problem. Finite element models can be mirrored. And after you, after you mirror them, their nodes and elements will be copied to the other end. So here I have copied the right portion, this part, on the other side. So I make a half model. And as you can see, the element shapes are very symmetric about this plane at x equals 0. I have a symmetrical element creation. That is actually a good practice when you're creating your finite element model to have symmetrical elements about planes. However, when you create this or when you create uh, go through this step, the nodes that fall on x equals 0 on this plane will be coincident. So you're going to have two nodes at the same point that you have to use non-merge command to merge those coincident nodes in order to make this whole thing a unit solid model or a solid part. This is something that we'll be covering throughout this course. So don't worry if you don't understand what non-merge is doing at this point. And finally, you can have multiple elements and multiple materials in a single simulation. So here, on a very simplified model of a PCB, I have structural element and different materials. So I have one material for the PCB, one for the solder joints, uh, one for the substrate, and one for the molding compound. On this one, which is a very simplified model of a suspension bridge, I have truss element types, I have beam element type, and also have a structural element type. So they have different material models and different element types. So in this video, we covered the basics of finite element model creation 
and how to consider proper solid mode creation to end up with a good mesh.